Now you'll hear a selection called The Palms by Gabriel Ferrer, which is a Palm Sunday favorite. <laughs> continue in worship this morning as we continue our sermon series, Reckless Love. Reckless Love has taught us so far that we are to begin with love, that we are to expand the circle of the people that we love, and that we are to lavish love, to give generous love to the people around us, whether it's easy or not. 
It is also reminded us of that we are to be open hearted with our love, that we are to love people the way we would like to be loved, uh, even when it is difficult, even when it seems reckless, and even when it seems uh, un impossible. We've learned to value the vulnerable that we are to value those who um, may not feel valuable or may not be seen as valuable in our society. And today we learn that we are to emulate Christ. Did you know that if you put begin with love, expand the circle, lavish love, open-hearted love, value the vulnerable, and emulate Christ. If you took the first letter of each of those um, topics and instructions, then it would say, be love. And that's the point of this whole series, that Jesus Christ calls us to be love in the world. So this Palm Sunday, we start with the parade, the parade that becomes really the anti-parade. And we read together from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 20, 1 through 11. And I'm reading this morning from the New International Version. So feel free to grab a Bible if you are nearby or to um, open up your electronic devices and read along with us this morning. Please stand for the reading of the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning. From Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning in the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem, and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answer, answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And now we jump over to the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter. Beginning in verse 20. What about you, Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. And then Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves 
and take up their crosses daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? What good is it for someone to gain their whole world and lose their soul? Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks, so oh God, for how you continue to meet us over and over and over again. We give thanks, so oh God, for how you speak to us and bless our hearts and minds and souls. We give thanks, so oh God, that you are the God who speaks when we are silent. So God, we've gathered around computers and televisions and phones and ele other electronic devices. We've gathered to hear a word from you. So take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said and everything that is done comes straight to you, from you, oh God. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. So here we are on finishing up our series, Reckless Love, on Palm Sunday. And we begin with the disciples preparing for the parade of Jesus to Jerusalem. This story reminds us that this is the beginning of Jesus' journey to the cross and then to that empty tomb. You see, Jesus was trying to teach the disciples everything he could teach them so that they could go on without him physically present and emulate the ways in which Jesus lived, loved, and loves in this world. Just like some of us, that some of the disciples got it, they were they understood what was going on, and just like some of us, some of the other disciples were as confused as they could be. You see, they didn't have the benefit of the rest of the story. They did not have the benefit of being able to know that what Jesus was telling them was just around the corner. So can you imagine what it was like during that first Holy Week when Jesus said, hey, go get me a donkey and a colt as well. And don't worry if anybody gives you any trouble. Say that it is the Lord. It is the Lord who needs it. And they will let you take it with them. So Jesus rides in to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, and he rides in on a donkey. Now, this is the opposite of the parades that the Roman government would have. The Romans would parade through towns in, uh, in, in a, a showing their power and their statue. They'd, roll, they'd parade in with horses and chariots, whatever they could do to remind the people that they were under their rule. So Jesus holds the anti-parade. No chariots, no power, a lowly donkey, and her cult. And the people begin to wave branches. They begin to shout Hosannas. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to God's son. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name 
of the Lord. When Jesus did this, the text reminds us, everybody wanted to know who Jesus was. But you see, we call it the anti-parade because no one really understood what was going to happen next. No one really understood that this parade stood in direct opposition of the Roman parades. No one quite understood that Jesus was riding through town to make a statement that those who were being worshipped because they were powerful were not God and were not the Son of God. But Jesus was mounting an opposition an opposition to the status quo, an opposition to the norm, an opposition to power. For Christians, it is important to remember that Holy Week is one of the most opposed weeks for the status quo. What do I mean by that? Jesus stood as the opposite of the culture. Jesus stands today as the opposite of the culture. When we have uh, political leaders who call themselves king and call themselves doing more for Christianity than Jesus Christ or standing as leaders who are to be adored and worshipped, Jesus stands as an antithetical opposition to that kind of living. Holy Week is political. Holy Week exists to remind us that while we live in this world, we are not of this world. That while we wake up every day in the United States of America, we really live in the kingdom of God. And this anti-parade stands as a remembrance and a reminder, as a mark and a signpost that if we are to emulate the Jesus the Christ, then we must live in countercultural ways. Hosanna means save us. Hosanna means help us, we pray. Save us, we pray. They were shouting, save us, son of David. Save us, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save us. I wonder how many of us are shouting, save us, in the midst of this pandemic. But are our hosannas directed at Jesus, or are they directed at the empire? Holy Week is a difficult week. I I get a little bit uh, antsy when Christians tell me that Holy Week is their favorite time of the year. Because Holy Week is one of the most difficult weeks in the year for people called Christians. We are called to take inventory of who and what we serve. We are called to take inventory of our images of servanthood. We are called to take inventory of our challenge to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. It's a reminder that we are called to challenge the political and social norms that do not reflect the justice that Jesus teaches us. The first anti-parade into Jerusalem 
the first triumphal entry. The people celebrated the opposition. People celebrated that justice had come. People celebrated that Jesus is countercultural and calls us to be countercultural. And very, very quickly, the people turn on Jesus and they side with the powerful. You see, we live in a world where we are called to live within the culture. We sing our loud hosannas to the CDC and to celebrity doctors and to healthcare and even to our political leaders. We sing our hosannas to medicine and to a certain way of life. We sing our hosannas to the stock market and to our bank accounts. We sing our hosannas to anyone and anybody who we think can help us live in a different and more fruitful way. But we forget the darkness of arguing against healing arguing against bowing down and worshiping, arguing against communal caretaking. Holy Week is a solemn opportunity to understand whether we are following Jesus are following the empire. The coronavirus is a very stark, a very stark reminder of this, that we live in a world that is about dollars and cents and me, 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 and how much can I amass? And yet, when something like this pandemic happens, we do not know where to go or how to understand it because all of those things and all of those people and all the things that make us comfortable and remind us that we are the home of the free and the land of the brave, all of those things collapse. And we're left to wonder, who is this Jesus that marches in the anti-parade? When we flip over to the Gospel of Luke, we are called to understand, we are taught that Jesus prepares the disciples for what comes next. And in preparing the disciples, in preparing each and every one of us for what is to come in this life and what is to come in this week, Jesus prepares us by saying, even I will suffer. I will suffer and you will suffer, but I will take the brunt of the suffering on your behalf. You just need to be clear about who I am. And the disciples say, oh, people say that you're John the Baptist. People say that you're Elijah. People say that you're one of the prophets who lived long ago and has come back to life. And then Jesus asked Peter a very pointed question. He asked all the disciples a very pointed question. He says, I know what other people say, but who do you say that I am? 
You who has walked with me and talked with me, you who have witnessed a feeding of the 5,000, you who have witnessed the teaching on, um, on the mount, you who have witnessed the healing of those who are ill, though you who have witnessed people who are dead being brought back to life, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah. Jesus told him not to tell anybody yet. And it's interesting that he told, he wanted them to be sure that they knew who Jesus is. But he wasn't ready for them to go and tell somebody else because it was important that the scriptures be fulfilled. Jesus said, the son of man will suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and he must die. He must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And then he told the disciples and each and every one of us how to emulate Christ. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to be my follower, whoever wants to be those called Christians, whoever wants to be one who is the recipient of abundant life because I died for you, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross every day and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for a person to gain the whole world and to lose their soul? The message puts it this way. It says, then he told them what they could expect for themselves. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You are not in the driver's seat. I am, says Jesus. Don't run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? So as we journey through this Holy Week, as we march with Jesus from the anti-parade to the sentencing in the upper room to the cross and all the way to that empty tomb, the question for us this week is, are we ready to be like Jesus? Does our life show that we are not in this life for us, but we are in this life for others. As we journey through Holy Week, we have to ask ourselves, we have to end where we began. Are we sure we love God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength? And are we sure 
we are loving our neighbors, all of our neighbors, as we love ourselves. Jesus says this is not a one-time deal, <laughs> that this is an everyday kind of thing, that every day we have to take inventory of how we're living our life and whether or not we are really emulating Christ. Every day, we have to acknowledge whether or not we have the courage to march with Jesus. Whether or not we're going to be the people who sang loud hosannas to Jesus or the people who shouted, crucify him. Are we willing to be the people who wash others' feet? Are we willing to be the people who sacrifice their own finances so that someone else might have health insurance and be able to get the wellness care that they need? Every day, are we willing to drag the cross, to bear the burdens, to refuse to accept anything other than abundant life that comes from being a disciple of Jesus Christ. The coronavirus backs us into a corner and it requires us to wonder what profit it has been for us to have 401ks and stocks in the stock market and power and privilege. What profit has it been for us to have all those things as we still die? And watch those who have succumbed to the coronavirus buried without us. What does it profit a person to gain the whole world and to lose their soul? How will you emulate Christ this week? How will you be the church this week? Who will you encourage this week? Who will you journey with this week? Will you take up the cross of Jesus? Will you follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, even? to death upon a cross. The good news is that we still have time. We have time to change our behaviors. We have time to change our beliefs that are counter cultural to e emulating Jesus. We have time to begin again afresh and anew. So I want you to join me this week in this journey. We'll be reading together each and every day the scriptures that help us journey through Holy Week. And I want you to join me in examining ourselves, examining whether our behaviors are those who sing loud hosannas to Jesus the King or those who shout crucify me. Are you bold enough? Do you have courage enough this week to ask God to show you where we are not emulating Jesus and to show us how we can while we have time? Be love, emulate Christ. Sacrifice self. Have the courage 
to follow Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So don't forget to sing your loud hosannas. Um, lots of people are putting their palms on their front doors or in their front windows as a remembrance of the Passover where uh, people, where they had to put the blood lamb across so that the uh, children would not die. Or as a remembrance for us that our job is to emulate Christ. And this week, I want you to join us on social media as we'll be reading through the Holy Week journey so that we may experience the march with Jesus. I'm so grateful that you have joined us uh, for worship this morning. I can't wait to see you on Thursday evening for Monday Thursday worship uh, at noon on Friday for Good Friday worship and on Sunday morning at 11 as we celebrate the resurrection day. Now, emulate Christ. Sacrifice what you need to sacrifice so that we can love God and our neighbors with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, and with all our strength. Take courage. God is with us. God sustains us. And God continues to extend grace and hope to each and every one of us, even while we are in this season. So now it's time for us to do our part. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us spotless before the most high God, be all honor, glory, and praise now and forever in the people of God saying. Let the church say amen. Let the church.